Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. The Social Democratic Party of Germany, SPD, they were the first party in Germany to announce who among their ranks will run for chancellor next year. I know it's a little early. The election is still, I believe, more than one year ahead of us. And uh, they are already at this point announcing who their candidate is. It is Olaf Scholz from Hamburg. He is also called scholz Omat, which would be a um, positive thing to say if he were a conservative or a centrist. But for a left-wing party, um, this um, name that of course mocks the fact or plays on the fact that he is seen as a technocrat is not a very charming thing to say. Of course, in a leftist party, you don't want to be a technocrat. You want to be a man of the people and a friend of the working class and someone who has uh, his heart on the right spot and all that stuff, you know, and who has empathy and all these things. But Mr. Scholz, just like their candidate before him, Mr. Schulz, who was um, more active on the EU level, not so much, on the German federal level, yeah, Mr. Schulz also. I mean, they have the same amount of, uh, they have the same number of points in charisma. Yeah, they have the charisma of a raw potato, I would say. But, uh, well, it is their candidate. So in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about Mr. Scholz and uh, what that means for the Social Democrats and for the coalition that they plan to forge then next year after the election. As you know, Hamburg is a very leftist um, city-state. Uh, I made a video that um, a large um, percentage, what was it, in the 80s or somewhere, of seats in their local city parliament went to leftist parties. Absolutely crazy. And this is where Mr. Scholz is from. Um, before um, he, yeah, uh, I'm, okay, maybe I should start this way. Right now, he is the vice chancellor under Angela Merkel, and he is the minister of finance. And that is, of course, the most powerful minister position that you can have in a cabinet. Yeah? And uh, before that, he was the first mayor of Hamburg. So he was the governor of that city state for. Exactly seven years, I think. And before that, he was also head of the Social Democratic Party. And he was also, I think, federal minister for social things and labor, I think. All right. So he is definitely an experienced politician, yeah, both in party politics and in the state government and also in the federal government. So from that point of view, yes, he's probably a very experienced, competent candidate. The thing is, however, that um, he lost a, um, yeah, an election within the Social Democrats um, it, and it was the last election um, that determined who is going to be the head of the Social Democratic Party. And it is a very modern thing these days that not one person is the head of the party. I think the Green Party started that, that there is always a a duo at the top of a party. Yeah? And of course, it has to be a man and a woman. This is uh, identity politics, right? So the Social Democrats do this too now. So, you know, the Green Party, it's um, um, Baerbock and um, something with H. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, I shouldn't have said that. And uh, in the Social Democratic Party, it was Mr. Scholz with some other woman whose name I also don't know because they are really not important and the current leaders uh, that whose names I have learned by now that is uh, Frau Esken and Mr. Walter Borjans or something like that, right? I made a video about him recently too. Anyway, so he, uh, to the surprise of many people, lost against these two guys who are um, not very experienced. That was a big surprise. And um, actually, the current leaders of the party, not all too long ago, they said something like, Mr. Scholz, who is that? 
And that is, of course, I mean, I have to say that for people who are not from Germany, of course, these people know Mr. Scholz. He is one of the head figures in the Social Democratic Party, their own party. So, of course, they know who it is. It is just uh, they wanted to express how little they um, think of him and um, that he is really unimportant and um, yeah, not, a, not an, an important figure for them, for their worldview. So in his own party, hmm, yeah, despite all of his experience, he doesn't really have the whole party behind him. And it's so funny when you see how these guys who were very much against him just uh, a couple of months ago now say that oh, he's a great candidate. And uh, we all know in leftist parties there is a lot of backstabbing. And this guy definitely has it coming because um, yeah, more than half of the party can't stand him. But that is not even the worst problem. The thing is, I said already, he's seen as a technocrat. And even though in his youth and when he joined the youth organization of the Social Democrats, the Young Socialists, the Usos, he was very, very far left, like anti-capitalist and uh, no private property and we need, we need uh, monopolies and all that stuff. So really far communist leftist ideas um, and I don't know this is always the funny thing with these people when they mature as politicians and like he was already in the cabinet of um, Mr. Gerhard Schröder the social democrat who now works for Russian gas exporters and um, who is notorious in Germany for having yeah, really cut down the 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 welfare system a bit you know so it was modernization of course but um Yeah, it, it was harsh for many people. So um, he cut a lot of social spending. And um, he was also uh, on the side of Mr. Schröder back then. Um, I think this is probably why the S social democratic base doesn't really like Mr. Scholz too much. And uh, also as an, yeah, for the, I think he was a senator for the interior also in Hamburg. And then he also... Uh, was a little bit on the side of the police a lot of times, which also these leftists don't like. Okay, so and what I wanted to say is about these people who in their youth are so radical and then later on become these technocrats who might as well be seen as conservative by many people. If you would ask average Germans who didn't read his biography or something, who don't know too much about him, Uh, what they think of Mr. Scholz, they would think, oh, he's on the right wing of the Social Democrats. He's pretty much in the center politically, right? But I don't really know. Are they just faking it? I mean, when they were 30, they were these radicals. And now when they're like in their 50s or something, or even in their 40s already, they, they, they are seen or they present themselves as these centrists, as these business friendly technocratic rulers who just want to find the optimum uh, outcome for most of the people and we have to make sure that the budget is met and all that stuff so yeah this is for example what m most people know about him that that he wants a balanced budget yeah he wants to uh, yeah keep the Uh, spending a little bit in in check and um, make sure that we don't need to make or go into new debt. That is what he's known for, if you would ask people. But I'm not so sure about that. I think he's still a far left um, actor who maybe disguised himself very well. Okay, so this is Mr. Scholz. And the funny thing is, now let's talk about coalitions. So he is... Well, I repeat once more, <laughs> the most people in the SPD don't like him. Um, he is seen by most people as a centrist technocrat. But the funny thing is the coalition that he will probably form or that the social democrats want to form after the election is, of course, a red, red, green coalition. Yeah? And uh, I think this is what we have in Hamburg right now. I made the video about that. I hope I'm not wrong about that now. But um, it means the uh, commie party, Die Linke. It means the Social Democrats. And it means the Green Party. So these three parties are basically the leftist parties of Germany. 
Yeah, of course, we don't count Angela Merkel's CDU as leftist, even though a lot of my audience, including me also as well, uh, to a certain extent, I think the CDU is also a leftist party, of course, but they're not counted as such. And I also wouldn't officially count them as such, but in practice they are. But let's just be clear about that. Those three parties, right? Die Linke, the SPD and the Green Party, those are the leftist parties. And that is the coalition he seeks to forge after the election. And that will be interesting because he's the last guy that you would think would head uh, as a chancellor a cabinet that is um, voted in or that, that, that is backed up by these three parties. Or, or I mean, that the chancellor is elected in German parliament right then. And um, that these three parties would vote for him. I would rather think if these three parties actually win a majority and form a coalition, that they would actually vote for maybe a chancellor from the Social Democrat Party if they are the biggest um, coalition party. But it wouldn't be Mr. Scholz. I think it would be someone else because I, I just cannot see the Green Party. Well, maybe the Green Party. They, they became, they're not so radical anymore. Or many of them, they're, they're old now. But uh, Die Linke, I just cannot see them vote for Mr. Scholz. Um, and, and so I think maybe it will be those three parties, maybe. But it will not be Mr. Scholz. And the other option is that the Green Party would actually be the bigger party in that coalition or the biggest party because Die Linke I think they make always around between 7 and 10 percent or something and it doesn't fluctuate much they're very stable very constant they have their old voters they have their radical left-wing voters and it doesn't fluctuate too much um, but the social democrats as you know they lost a lot um, to the green party many voters moved over from the SPD to the green party and I I could really imagine that the Green Party is the bigger party of the two after the election. And that means that Mr. Scholz, yeah, I mean, the Social Democrats, they, they choose their chancellor candidate, but maybe they don't really believe anymore themselves at this point already that they will be, that they will have more seats in Parliament than the Green Party next autumn. Maybe they don't even believe that themselves anymore. And, and I think that is very realistic. I, they, they, they could get, I mean, now I think in the polls, they are around 15%. I mean, they used to have like 40 in Germany, right? And now they have 15. Uh, this is how the Social Democratic Party, the, the party of the working class, the labor party, they have collapsed in Germany. And... Um, Yeah, maybe they make 10% next election. I don't know. Because they thought that they will get this boost now in public opinion and when they when they nominate Mr. Scholz, but yeah, that there 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 is no boost. I mean, from a guy without charisma that that not many people like and that some people think he's not a bad guy or he is he's harmless, and that is the most positive thing you can think about him. But um even that is going to change maybe because he will have to answer or he already started to or it already started that he has to answer in many dubious cases actually and i will talk about that in more detail in upcoming videos uh, one that i probably don't want to talk about because i'm not so interested in that is the wire card um, scandal that was a big um, company it's a financial transaction company maybe something like paypal or something like that some online payment facilitator and they were in the german uh, stock index dax and um, yeah there, there was a lot of fraud going on and um, even the um, auditors uh, didn't really catch that and uh, we also have a federal office that is in charge or that is charged with uh, controlling these financial transactions or these um, providers for financial transactions is called BaFin and they also screwed up a bit and uh, as finance minister he is actually responsible for that and that a lot of money was lost a uh, big fraud case and he technically I mean of course maybe he wasn't on an operational level involved but technically he is responsible and he will have to answer a couple of hot questions and that might depending on how he how he comports himself during that examination uh, he will 
suffer maybe uh, in popularity. So his popularity might go down. But what is even more important, that is a scandal from his city, Hamburg. And it goes back to the time when he was the mayor there. And that is the Cum-Ex scandal. The biggest case of tax fraud in the history of the Federal Republic. And um, Hamburg was involved. The state of Hamburg was involved. He was also involved. Um, at least he met the people from this bank who uh, did this. And um, I don't want to give away too much because I want to make a dedicated video about that. But suffice it to say that the bank in Hamburg, I mean, let's be fair here, many, many banks engaged in this kind of tax fraud. It was not only that bank, uh, but um, how they interacted with the state in order to, for a short time at least, get away with these illegal um, activities. It's basically stealing tax money from the German taxpayer. That's what these banks did. And this bank is called Warburg. That is a name that I read more and more often these days when it comes uh, to um, yeah, influencing public opinion, public policy, and now also stealing from German taxpayers. As you know, maybe if you watched my video on the Atlantic Brücke Club, um, that is a private club that is meant to influence public opinion and policy in Germany in favor of US interests and that was founded by a member of that Warburg clan, a banking clan that has a bank in Hamburg. Um, let's just say they are not from Hamburg, okay? <laughs> I leave it at that. And um, he is definitely involved in that scandal and he said, oh, I can't remember these meetings with these bankers and, and oh, in case something happened there, it wasn't important and, and he cannot remember anything. So it's interesting as a, as a mayor, he cannot remember who he met and what he said and, and, and why he was in the room and, and yeah, absolutely scandalous. Nobody believes that. And, uh, the papers are writing about it, so I am surprised. I have to say this is not swept under the rug. Um, the uh, newspaper, very left-wing newspaper, Die Zeit, uh, reported in detail a very, very good, very well-researched, in-detail article about this. And I can understand why this newspaper does that, because they are no longer on the side of social democrats, they are on the side of the Green Party, and that is why they do that, okay? So just for background information. And this is why Mr. Scholz is a horrible candidate, but um, I think it doesn't even matter, because the social democrats, they don't even believe in themselves. That's my verdict, that's my Bottom line message for this video, yeah, Mr. Scholz might be their candidate for chancellor in 2021 in the election next autumn. But I don't think that they will win. Um, they themselves don't think that they will win. Um, and if there is a red-red-green coalition, which I don't think, I think we will see a black-green coalition, as I said in the previous video, that is Merkel CDU with whoever will win the battle for supremacy and for leadership in that party, or and together with the Green Party. And there, I think, um, they will not be chancellor then, because uh, no matter how good they do, it would be a big surprise if they would be bigger than the CDU. The CDU scores very, very high now in popularity because uh, people are scared of this pandemic thing and um, they think that the CDU did a good job at maneuvering Germany through this crisis which probably was sheer luck and as I say we um, Germany was um, getting through this crisis more or less well despite of our government not because of our government not because of the CDU or Merkel or Mr. Spahn but in spite of them. Okay, so that's it. I mean, Mr. Scholz, horrible candidate, but he will never be chancellor, I guess. Even in that red-red-green coalition, it will probably be the Green Party that um, um, decides who the chancellor is. Or if those three parties vote for an SPD guy, it will probably be a leftist SPD guy and not Mr. Scholz, who is seen, as I said, more as a technocrat 
and uh, a friend of the banksters and the big businesses. And he's a he's a lawyer and he specialized in labor law. So that that so as 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 I said, um, his qualifications are actually sound. I don't think this guy is a dummy. Um, as a labor uh, law specialist, it's, it's actually a very good qualification for a politician. Um, so um, he's probably even a good technocrat from that point of view. But um, I don't think um, he has any majority even in his own party as this last election showed where he lost against these two nobodies from the left wing, uh, Frau Esken and Mr. Walter Boyans. All right, so... I just wanted to inform you guys about this and um, this is also a good segue into this whole Cum-Ex Hamburg uh, tax uh, theft uh, scandal where Mr. Scholz is involved in and you will be hearing about that which is a very interesting story in an upcoming video. Talk to you guys again later. Servus Kameraden.